Alright, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Plastic, Plastic Memories, Memories, Episode 7. seven. The truth right. is out. Yeah. Yeah, Sukasa knows. Mm -hmm. Only seven episodes left. And yet he still chooses Ira in, I yep. would say, the most earnest good boy way he can. Yep. Ira hears him do this. Mm -hmm. He does not know that she heard him do this, but mm -hmm. that isn't super important. Right. And yeah. I am curious to see how she responds in a way that is positive to mm -hmm. this, in a way that's showcasing that she's grateful but I'm also curious as to how apprehensive she is to communicate right. that she knows that he knows. Yeah, because she has been abandoned before. Right. So, yeah. And, and in a lot of ways, while the way that he is being there for her is incredible, mm -hmm. she also could probably use some honest, open discussion about what she's going through. Yeah. Because she's dying. And that's... That's rough, buddy. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, yep. without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, and then come back here for the discussion. Okay. Ara, ara. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. But, wow. But, yeah, so okay. this episode happened. We, we have made that mm -hmm. bit of progress, even though... Even though we had to work to get here because mm -hmm. Sukasa is still listening to the advice of well and Ira too of the people around them. Well is, you know, that that is a way of doing things. That is definitely yeah. a way of doing things. And and I would say that since their characters are so simple in that they mm -hmm. would be at a loss as to what to do on their own proactive mm -hmm. you know Yeah. Uh, you know desires or what have you um they need to have that open honest communication yes which they mm -hmm. finally did right which could mean that this is the last bit of that kind of style of potentially of progression and, because and, we right. only have so much time with them mm -hmm. and they so, brought that up this episode even though they like it wasn't as on the nose of like hey you know like all right, it has a, to be today. You like, know. there's a, that's another day that you know you're never right. gonna get with her again. You right. know, like exactly. It was it was very much something that was <laughs> One because day. there was a bunch of days. Yeah, a bunch of days. Like work, they went montage. They, they went from they went from a thousand hours to yeah. There's a little over a month left. Like like who who like maybe it's the whole thing of like the um like the 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 work culture in japan you know where like say you only have like one day off or something like that or whatever oh um, i didn't think about that so it's like oh yeah our next day off that might be 10 days from now but you know like when when we get one um mm -hmm. uh yeah and kazuki was wanting to make sure that that you know kept uh they kept a tight schedule um yeah but now they have officially broken the ice a little bit. And one of the things that I'm I'm excited for them to do kind of from here moving forward is because they've the show's put them in the situations for them to be a couple, but they haven't they haven't fully completely gotten that chemistry down to where they feel comfortable with each other, right? right. And that's where you really want to be as far as having a relationship with someone. That's yeah. where you can get real close, get attached, so that when they're gone there really it really feels like there's a hole inside of you yeah um but so we need yeah either the rest of the show to be about their relationship mm -hmm. or we need at some point in an episode the biggest montage of montages for uh -huh. the building of that connection i'm sorry michiru but he's just not that into you and and quite frankly um you have plenty of time Ivor doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the aspect of Ira letting him know, like, hey, I only have mm -hmm. a month of time. He didn't go, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. He basically let her say this. Yep. And then she apologizes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, why are you apologizing? He's like, well, because I didn't tell you till now. Yep. And what I think is cool about that is that it's not about whether or not they both knew that they knew or who knew that someone mm -hmm. knew right it's that because she was willing to let him know this he knows that she cares enough about him yes to 
in order to say it yeah. to say that mm -hmm. and yeah and that is i think the beginning of their mm -hmm. of their connection and the other bit that she said which was her desire Yes. Not just a thing of making him understand something, but actually expressing right. a desire, which was, I want to have you smile always, which is um, something she can't do. No, definitely not. But it's a desire mm -hmm. that could lead to him smiling a lot more. Sure. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's a that's a rather sweet starting point for her to... that That's the thing that she can give. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's... Yeah. That's all we can expect from her for now. One of the things and that's that, a good I mean, that's a good start. Yeah. Um, one of the things that constantly kind of surprises me in the uh -huh. show, because in a lot of ways that sometimes the, the pacing of things will frustrate me a little bit. I'll be like, oh, come on, uh -huh. you have limited time left. Like, you know, like we know that this is going to end with her dying. So let's let's really focus on that the whole way there. And yet she has so many insecurities and whatnot that she's not fully ready for that in the same way that Tsukasa, you know he's going through the stages of the oh my god i can't actually ask her out on a a, a, a date right um and that's all part of the you have limited time left and you know this yeah you know and and in a lot of ways her telling him that she has limited time left is feel feels like to me like she's also coming to terms with it mm -hmm. because she's been grappling with this the entire show right yeah. most of the time like pretty much any time that she's on screen yep. that's th the process that she's going through that's what's it's, on her mind yeah that's what's on her mind that's that's the uh foundation for her for her kudere trope you know character archetype right, right? in this situation yeah. is that she's dying and that raises a lot of questions that there's a lot of concerns and, and things surrounding that topic that she's not fully able to address, certainly not by herself. And there yeah. are reasons in her past why it is at this level. You know, Kazuki distanced herself from her because it wasn't working out, right? Mm -hmm. And now she has this feeling like, oh, I need to make sure I'm useful because otherwise he might leave me too. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate. And, and I would love for them to, to focus on that a bit more directly, but mm -hmm. at the same time, because they've made the premise of the show and Ira's character so clear, it's not like that's, it's it's not lost, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it just might not quite have a spotlight on it. Right. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I have a, a couple completely non-valuable uh theories with regards to the whole collapsing thing oh i think gotcha. it's the it's the workload thing that the mm. aspect of him being like i'm gonna work hard yeah so this is after the work montage bit sure i think the other thing that might be something that they brought up also in this episode that ties into it and i don't think it's super important but is the idea that he's not eating as well because he's also working super hard oh. so that was something that michiru brought up mm. so it's just a combination of him working really hard spending out with uh Ira, a long day at the the amusement park, mm -hmm. not eating as well. He blacks out one time, yep. and it was in an area that might have had a limited amount of air space that was fresh. So, sure. So that's a little bit of a combination there. But what mm -hmm. I thought was interesting was that you immediately jumped to the, <gasps> what if he's a gifty this whole time? I'm like, yeah, that that's funny, but that's, that's right. not actually the case. Uh -huh. But what's what's interesting here is that this was an instance where this is probably what it's going to happen with Ira at some point. Yes. There's going to be a moment probably at a mm -hmm. key place, like an important place, not necessarily right. the amusement park, but somewhere of importance where they're going to be having a tender, sweet moment, and then she'll black out, mm -hmm. and he'll have to help her. But in this moment there, she was able to help him. Yes. She got him out of the amusement park. She got yeah. him back to his mm -hmm. house. She tucked him in she like yeah. took care of him and stuff and i'll bet she felt really good about feeling useful to him in that that sure. instance there yeah and that's something that probably won't happen that much, much in the future yeah uh-huh because yep. there yep. was there was something rather uh clever that the show did in terms of visual storytelling but also without the dialogue when he looked at her journal oh uh-huh uh, yeah yeah, saw that, no more entries. Saw yep. that moment where mm -hmm. this was a really special moment. Then after that, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing. She looks back on that moment. That's the only one I can remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
right. one of the things that, you know, right. the Gifties are known to start losing over the course of them coming to their expiration date is memories, little aspects of their motor functions, mm -hmm. personality, little sure. little things here and there on the fringes. And this is just another little reminder mm -hmm. of oh, right. And the idea yeah. and the idea also that it was that it's also a very conscious decision for Ira that she doesn't want to make memories, or yep. she hasn't wanted yep. to, right? Yep. Thank you. So yep. she stops journaling, right? Yep. The idea almost that, yeah, when I end up going, no one really cares about me, so I'll just disappear. Yep, just fade away. Yep, mm-hmm, and that'll be that. And it'll be final, too. Like it won't right, be a, exactly. Like a remnant of me remains yeah, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but that'll, I'll be gone. Yeah, but th since this show is going to go for maximum tear-jerking, mm -hmm. like stuff yep. whenever it ends uh they're going to bring up the beautiful aspect of what memories are right that a person yep. never truly dies unless mm -hmm. they're forgotten i yeah i was yep. hoping you would go there yeah. and you yeah. did yep yeah. but um <sighs> one of the things that is also worth mentioning i feel like is that ira doesn't just need the um resolution of everything with Tsukasa. Oh, yes. She also needs right. it with Kazuki. Kazuki, yep. And that's something that maybe, mm -hmm. maybe now that now that Tsukasa has been in, brought into this fold of it, you know, mm -hmm. he can actually help out there, right? Because he does talk with um, Kazuki a bit, specifically about Ira. And the fact that Kazuki very much puts on sort of a... Uh, an exterior, a facade, a sure, you know, like like you could you could call it the anime character archetype trope, you know, whatever, yeah. or it's something that she does specifically because we have been shown that she isn't very good at dealing with feelings. Yeah. In, so in this case, one of the things that the show has done a couple times, more often than not, is they make it very clear that oh yeah, we're gonna use this anime archetype. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we're using this anime archetype is because it communicates right. rather directly yes. <laughs> um, what are the deeper parts of this character that, right. that matter to their story. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's the episode, y'all. One of the mm -hmm. most like wholesome and just happy ones that we've gotten in a while. I, I really hope and that... Just, they went on a date. Mm -hmm. They went on a sweet little date. Yes. This is like creating a memory. And, and you can check our journal maybe in the future, and maybe this will maybe be Maybe there will be something, yeah. Maybe well, this will okay. be there. Okay, like, as far as predictions go, all right, I'm going to predict with about 88% certainty ah. that when she dies, it he's going to... for the data. <laughs> he's going to find one last journal entry. Mm. You know, and that's going to be, like, her final message to him of, like, thank you for these, you know, the time we've shared and the moments and the memories and all of that stuff. They're precious to me, you know. Um... It could happen before then, of course, but, mm -hmm. um, or he realizes that there's, that she started journaling, like, you know, maybe a few weeks before, before she died. Oh, um, yeah. And then he gets to sort of see how everything meant to her in a way that maybe oh. she wasn't comfortable expressing while she was alive. Or at the end, he shows her his journal. Oh, and yeah. It's all the things that they've done together sure like that would be yeah. that would be just one of the things that precious that i was a little bit surprised well okay so the whole thing of him collapsing i was a bit surprised by that right and yeah. and there's a part of me that wonders if they're trying to go for some sort of subvert expectations you know thing where like you think the one person's gonna die but then actually the other person ends up going first i don't think they're gonna do that yeah. i hope they don't do that but um i have 108 percent certain <laughs> that that's not what they're yeah, doing yeah, here yeah but one of the things that I also thought was um, important here is that it could be considered another situation where Ira sees herself as being a burden mm -hmm. because he Possibly. collapsed. He was picking up slack for her at work, right? He was worrying about her own physical state and all of that stuff and the fact that she's dying and whatnot. And, okay. And that could potentially be another point of conversation. Now, maybe it's, you know, not that important or she understands that this is something that he's happy to do. Mm -hmm. um, but... I wonder if that'll hmm. cause conflict potentially. Yeah, oh, probably not. I think I think there's something there, but I don't think it it ties to this specific instance here. Gotcha. Because we resolved the direct stuff from it mm -hmm. with her 
being happy that he's okay and that they were then this kind of this forced them to have a quiet alone moment together basically. sure yeah turn if, the tables a if in that bit. respect that was probably the point of the michiru scene was to showcase that she didn't want to butt in she yes. understands that it's not her place necessarily to right. do that which is appreciated both i'm sure by the characters and also by me yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so y'all Thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general. You can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. Yeah, so if you haven't heard yet, I wrote mm -hmm. a sci-fi novel. It's really cool. It's called Battle Lines, and it's on Amazon, available for purchase if that interests you. Uh, link's in the description down below. It's in both hardback and ebook, so go check it out. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next, next time. time.